Joining me now is Democratic Congresswoman Barbara Lee, co-chair of the House Democrat Steering and Policy Committee, and the first African-American woman to serve in a leadership position in Congress. Congresswoman Lee, you have personified for as long as uh, I can remember the term progressive being used. You personified progressive politics at various stages in your career. Yet you don't disagree with the pullout in Syria and if Afghanistan and feel that it is a progressive position not to disagree. Explain. Thank you, Reverend Now, First of all, let me say uh, I actually have introduced legislation in the past calling for no funds for combat uh, troops in Syria. This war in Syria has never uh, been authorized by Congress, and so we have never debated the costs and consequences of our brave young men and women in, combat, in um, the military operations who are engaged in Syria. But secondly, uh, let me say that there's no military solution. Most military experts will uh, acknowledge that. We have a comprehensive uh, strategy that needs to be put together, or we should have one that should be put together. The president, by announcing a withdrawal on Twitter, to me is totally irresponsible. I have never said, let's just immediately pull our troops out from anywhere. We need a plan, a strategy. We need to know what we're going to do to fill the gaps, for example, in Syria, how we're going to protect protect the Kurds. And so there's a lot to be done. But the way this president is doing, I th doing this, I think, is just totally irresponsible <clears throat> and it's wrong. Now, let me ask the other prevailing question as you and others uh, head to Washington this week to start the new Congress. How do we deal with the shutdown? Hundreds of thousands of people will not be paid or furloughed that really need to be paid. And they're being held as leverage to try and get a $5 billion allotment to build a wall at the Mexican border. How do the Democrats and you intend to try to deal to salvage this situation? First, it's out outrageous and it's a shame and disgrace that this administration would do this to so many federal workers, up to 800,000 federal workers who, as you said earlier, aren't making a lot of money. And it's just downright wrong. The, first of all, the Republicans, they own the House, the Senate, and the White House. They are totally responsible for this shutdown. And believe you me, once Democrats take control uh, next week, one of our first legislative initiatives will be to offer legislation to open the government up. Shutting down the government is wrong in many respects and President Trump and the way he has handled this by holding federal workers hostage is, is downright uh, un-American and it should not happen. We have offered in many instances ways to solve this crisis and that's what it is and he continues to say that he wants funds for an immoral wall that is not necessary we all agree border security is an issue that we have to deal with but building a wall wasting taxpayer dollars to do this is is totally uh, wrong and we're gonna take care of that as Democrats being responsible and doing our job. What are the first things that the Democrats are going to begin with when they get to town this week? What are the priorities? What is the timetable? Well, of course, first we have to make sure that we uh, move forward to open the government up so that uh, this people so that people can uh, get their paychecks, so that they can take care of their families, so they can put food on the table. But secondly, we have H.R. 1, which is really a, a bill to restore our democracy, to look at campaign finance reform, to make sure voting, our voting rights are restored, and to make sure that government functions. That will be the first item of bill. But also we have legislation and are working, again, for the people to make sure that we have an infrastructure bill that creates good paying jobs and providing the type of uh, infrastructure uh, initiatives that we need in our country. We're going to fight to reduce the cost of prescription drugs. We know how to do this and we're going to do this. And it's very important that we uh, help restore hope and faith in the American people by showing that uh, we're going to make sure that we're going to get rid of the corruption in Washington. In D.C. with this Trump administration. We have a lot on our plate, but I think our history as Democrats have shown that we can get the job done for the people, and that's exactly what we're going to do.
You, you, you mentioned infrastructure, and it seems interesting to me that we have all this about a wall in the, on the Mexican border, and all of us are concerned about border security, no doubt about it. I think everybody uh, agrees with that. But we're not even dealing with the walls and the bridges and the highways in the infrastructure in the United States. I mean, that's not even a priority discussion with this president, who also promised, by the way, to do something about the infrastructure. And we're not even dealing with our crumbling schools. We're not uh, addressing the uh, infrastructure needs in rural communities. Look at uh, issues around water and, and lead in, in our pipes in many communities. When you look at infrastructure needs as it relates to affordable housing, uh, there's a crisis in America. There's a state of emergency in, in, as it relates to affordable housing. And so all of these uh, really basic standard of living initiatives that fall under what uh, would be a very strong and robust infrastructure plan. The president's not talking anything about this. By doing some of these things, we would create jobs, we'd create good paying jobs, and help lift people out of poverty. Right now, Reverend Al, so many people are working two and three jobs and still living below the poverty line and just barely hanging on. And so Democrats are going to do something about that because we care about the people and we care about their lives. <clears throat> Will the battle then be between the House where the Democrats are pushing forward on the agenda items you've outlined, and the Senate where the Republicans still maintain control, even picked up a seat. There's going to be the legislative battle between the Senate and the House on many of these things. Yes, but I think that just speaks volumes to the fact that we have to work in a bicameral way. We're going to all have to work with our senators, and we're going to try to make sure that we have the type of uh, policies le leaving the House that really the Senate can embrace and or can negotiate with us. And so it's extremely important that the House and the Senate work together for the common good. And I think we can do that. When you look at issues around comprehensive immigration reform, when you look at all of the issues as it relates to climate change, when you look at, uh, again, infrastructure, when you look at reducing the cost of uh, prescription drugs, and when you look at really working to make sure that uh, we restore our democracy, I think there's a lot of common ground that can be found with uh, members of the Senate. Well, Congressman, Congresswoman Barbara Lee,